Hello! Today I want to talk about a software called PixInsight. If you've spent any time at all in online astrophotography groups, you have heard of PixInsight. And you have probably heard three things about PixInsight over and over again. Um, it's expensive, it's powerful, and it is hard to learn. I've always been curious about PixInsight and interested in giving it a shot. and I've finally taken a look at it. Today I want to talk about my first impressions and my thoughts on the accuracy of those three claims about Pix Insight. Let's start with the first claim. It's expensive. This is the website for Pix Insight, and you can see that uh, it comes at a cost of 300 euros. Right now that works out to about 325 US dollars, but obviously that will vary with the exchange rates. So on the face of it, yeah, that's a lot of money to pay for software. However, compared to you know other media processing tools, graphics processing, video processing, um, video editing software, etc., it's not that expensive compared to other products. Um, for instance, I also use uh, Photoshop with a cloud license, which costs $10 a month. Um, and obviously $10 is a lot less than 325, but you know, you're not gonna pay that $10 once, you're gonna pay it every month. I've been using it for a few years now, so over that time I have paid uh, probably more for Photoshop than I paid for PixInsight. And with that $300 license, um, you get free support and free updates. So this is a one-time purchase, lifetime license. If actual photography is something that you plan to do for a long time, you know, many years, decades, like I do, $300 one-time price is a lot. But if you amortize that over the life of your hobby, um, it's actually fairly reasonable for what you're going to get out of it. A couple more things to point out. Um, as they say here, there is no refund policy, or I should say there is a policy, but the policy is there are no refunds. But they do offer a 45 day free trial license. Um, so I definitely recommend you take advantage of that uh, before you purchase and make sure that it is something you're going to use and enjoy. So, you know, first claim, is it expensive? Yes, but compared to other tools, um, it's not that expensive. All right, let's look at the second claim. Is it powerful? So this is an image I took about a month ago of the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. This image was processed using a combination of Serial and Photoshop. This basically represents the, the best that I can do with those tools, uh, with my current uh, image processing skills. And I will readily admit um, I am not an expert in image processing. I've been processing astrophotography images for a few years now. I have learned a lot. Um, I've improved quite a bit in that time, but there are definitely people who can get more out of serial and Photoshop uh, than I can. Uh, this is an image result I was pretty happy with, especially considering that um, I only had not even two and a half hours of exposure time on the target, which was not enough to you know, produce a really super clean image with, you know, very low noise. And you can see in this image that, actually if I zoom in a little bit, there's quite a bit of noise in the background. And, you know, it's not a very uh, vibrant image with the colors of the horse head and the flame. I use this image, uh, the underlying image data, as the basis for testing out uh, PixInsight and Doing a comparison of what it can, what I can do with PixInsight versus what I can do um, with these other tools, and I was looking for two things uh, with this experiment. One was to see could I use PixInsight to at least duplicate these results in less time, or could I use PixInsight with a relatively short learning curve to produce superior results. So this is the image that I produced with PixInsight from the same underlying image data. It's the same 
uh, actually took the same stacked image that I used for uh, this image. And you can see, you know, you immediately see a very clear difference between these two images. Um, colors are way more vibrant. You can really see a lot more details in the cloud structure and not only the flame nebula, but also in the reflection nebula NGC 2023 uh, right here in the image. You know, by comparison, um, the image I processed in Serial on Photoshop is very flat and it's the structure details are not nearly as detailed. Yeah. Especially love the flame nebula in this version of the image. It it's very vibrant and it really looks like you know it's actually on fire. Especially with the reds in the core here and it's a very small and subtle detail, but I really like this you know, a patch of pink right here, uh, the left or left part of the flame nebula that you know, I didn't even notice. It's, I mean, you can just barely see it in this version of the image, but I didn't even notice it was there. You can also see that it is a far cleaner image. Um, there's very little image noise uh, in this image compared to uh, this image. Now, it's still not a perfect image. Um, there are things in this image that I would like to improve on as I learn more about Pix and Sight. You know, I would like to do a better job of taming these bright stars um, as one example. In fact, that's really, um, the stars are really my primary complaint um, in this image, even though I'm very happy with it, especially again at being less than two and a half hours of, if we can answer the second claim you've heard about Pix and Sight, which is yeah, you know, it's powerful. I think clearly it is a very powerful tool. Um, you know, this image that from version of the image from Serial on Photoshop. You know, that's a combination of um, years of doing image processing of astrophotography images using those tools, um, many hours of learning and practicing different techniques. Um, and again, I don't claim to be an expert in those, but I have learned quite a lot using them. Uh, compared to this image from basically an afternoon or you know an afternoon and a half of playing with the software, um, you know, going through tutorials, really experimenting with it, and I'm still very much just scratching the surface of what PixInsight is capable of doing. So as I dig deeper into it. I'll certainly be able to improve even on the, these results. Now, like I said, I've got years of experience doing image processing of astrophotography images. So I wasn't going into Pix and Sight blind. Um, if I had never used, you know, say Cyril, um, and went from that point into Pix and Sight, it probably would have taken me longer to get this result because I was able to build on the experience and knowledge that I've developed using other tools because even though PixInsight is a much more powerful tool and is able to do, um, has a lot more features, you know, it does build on the same concepts and it has, you know, the same tools that you would find in, in something like Cyril. Um, there's just different versions of it and they have more tools. So we've checked off two boxes. It's expensive and it's powerful. Now let's look at, is it difficult to learn? So the first time you open up PixInsight, whether you do a trial license or purchase it outright, it's going to look like this. Um, now, if you've got experience using image editing software, you know, whether it's Cyril, Photoshop, GIMP, whatever, you know, first thing you're probably gonna do is open one of your images. Uh, so this is the raw stack of the image I was just showing you of the flame and horse at Nebula. And, you know, you want to start working with it. Now, that's basically what I did. And I got this far and, you know, there's nothing really jumping out of this interface telling you, hey, start here. Um, uh, you might start running through the, you know, different menus. 
especially if we get to like process, um, we have a bunch of different tools that you can use. But, you know, even coming into this from, you know, using tools like Cyril and, you know, even playing a little bit with um, Astro Pixel Processor, a lot of this is, you know, kind of an opaque interface. You know, there's lots of things, lots of options. What do they do? Um, some are pretty, you know, some might be pretty obvious uh, from the start. For instance, you know, crop is crop. You know, if you've used other image tools, you'll recognize uh, curves. Um, probably so can't start there. You click on curves. Uh, so you get this tool. It looks like a pretty standard uh, curves tool. You know, get a nice little S curve going. But nothing is happening. Where, you know, this is not affecting the image. This should be giving me a pretty strong stretch, but it's doing absolutely nothing. Um, so just walking into PixInsight blind is very difficult. So just opening it up and looking at the software, it's pretty much an opaque interface. Um, I was not getting anywhere just looking around. So I started looking up some YouTube videos and tutorials, and I found a couple that were extremely helpful to me, and I will link to them in the description. One especially was extremely helpful in getting started by YouTube user uh, Luco Medico. I hope I think his name right. Um, he really did a very thorough and well-structured tutorial. Um, I was stuck at one point in the tutorial, and I'll put a link in the description, um, where he was showing how to do the photometric color cal calibration. And I was basically stuck on that point because since he had published his video about a year ago, there had been a Pix Insight uh, tutorial that uh, there was a Pix Insight update which changed the photometric color calibration tool and removed the play solving features from it. So I was stuck on that point because um, his interface, Luca Medico's interface, was different from mine, what he had in the video from what I had on my screen, and I saw no way to get past that. Did some research, found another video that showed how to configure the play solving so that I could do the photometric color calibration and continue with the tutorial. Um, and that video was by a YouTube user Visible Dark, and I'll link to that in the description as well. So I'm not going to go through a full tutorial um, right, th right now on how to process an image or how I achieved the result, um, because mainly it would be reproducing those two videos. So I will link to those in the description, but I will kind of point through some of the oddities of the PixInsight interface. So I'm going to scroll uh, Holy Workspace to the right. So one of the features in the PixInsight software, um, as far as its UI, is that you can actually take any of the tools and basically save them to your PixInsight desktop, for lack of a better term, or your workspace. And that's what these are over here. So these are all shortcuts to PixInsight tools um, pre-configured with uh, different settings um, of how to use them for, you know, specific uh, results. I'm going to open up the STF tool, which stands for uh, Screen Transfer Function. Now, if you've used Serial um, or other tools, you'll probably be familiar with the concept of an image auto stretch. This is how you get that auto stretch in PixInsight. So, uh, what we do is you open the, that tool, Screen Transfer Function. I don't know why it's called that. And basically you click this little like radiation symbol um, and it will auto stretch your image. So um, it's really kind of funny, you can actually see in this auto stretch, just in one click, it's basically reproduced or did possibly a little bit better than I did um, with a bunch of manual steps to achieve uh, this result with Serial and Photoshop. Uh, 
So that's actually uh, pretty interesting. Now, th this point is not actually done anything to the image. Um, auto stretch, you can think of it like a preview. It gives you a look into what's in your image data without actually changing it. So this is still, at this point, what's known as a linear image, um, meaning that you know, it's still flat, raw data. It hasn't been stretched at all. Now, so I'm going to go ahead and show um, the photometric color calibration. Um, it's an example of showing some of the other strange things in the interface. Um, the honestly, the user interface is just strange. They, you know, the software industry has spent years. You know, I'm a software engineer. The software industry has spent years uh, developing a fairly you know standard language of user interface of common functions, things you just expect to always be there and work the same way in every software. You know, so for instance, just something as simple as, you know, the minimize, maximize, and close icons in the corner of the window. In these tools, uh, so this is minimize, this little chevron and bar, and they call it shade. Click that and yeah, it minimizes into this little bar here. Um, and you can unshade to restore it. Now to actually apply a step to an image. So I showed you earlier the curves tool and how it, you know, in fact, I'll just switch to that. Yeah, you know, I was doing all of the stretching of the data and nothing was happening. Um, so the reason for that is to actually do anything, you have to click one of these buttons down here. So for instance, I could just drag this little triangle onto my image and it will do the thing. Um, so you can see here, it's right now I have the saturation selected for curves instead of the, um, RGBK, which is how you stretch the code in the image. So I'm actually going to reset the curves with this little um, inward pointing set of four arrows. So I've got RGBK selected now. And I'll do that. Oh, I just need to, yeah, I just need to undo. All right, so now drag that over. So that's one thing. Um, as you can see, that just blew out the image. I'm going to undo that again. Now, as you can imagine, um, constantly doing a step, you know, seeing whether you like it or not, and then undoing it, then redoing it, undoing it, redoing it, we get tedious. So what you want to do is create a real-time preview by clicking a little circle. Don't ask me why it's a circle. I don't know. And at this point, it will function much more like what you're probably used to in other tools, where as you drag the curves, it responds in real time. Um, and this little square is another way to um, actually impact the image. So I can either drag the triangle or just click square and it will impact the image. One thing to watch out for, especially in tools like curves, whenever you apply a curve to an image, the curve, it stays curved. So what's going to happen is, if you were paying attention, you just saw it. As soon as I apply the curve to the image, it's going to then immediately re-preview applying the same curve again, which compounds the stretching, because I still have the uh, preview turned on. So you want to um, so do that after each stretch to either uh, you want to reset the tool and go back to where you were. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of how the PixInsight um, interface works. And I think it's safe to confirm that, yes, it does have a steep learning curve. Um, but there are very good tutorial videos out there that really walk you through step by step by step what you need to do. So just to, you know, recap the, you know, three points. Is it expensive? Yes. 
bought. You know, is it expensive? Yes, but you get a get value for the money, and you know, compared to other tools, especially you know subscription tools like Photoshop, the price is reasonable for what you get. Now, compared to free tools like Serial, um, which is a very powerful tool, you can do a lot with it. Um, it's not going to be you know that is obviously a lot more expensive than. $325 is a lot more expensive than free. Um, then final point, is it powerful? I think um, clearly yes. Um, given the results I was able to achieve in you know, a fairly short amount of time with a product, um, yes, I think it's very powerful. Now, is it worth you know $325 to you? Obviously, uh, only you can decide that. Um, and there are, especially given the number of, you know, high quality and great tools out there. Um, you know, it really depends on, it depends obviously on what your spending tolerance is, as well as how interested you are in this hobby and what kind of results you're trying to achieve uh, with your images. You know, for a long time, I was thrilled to get, you know, anything that was a recognizable image of the sky um, that I could show my friends. And, you know, I knew I wasn't getting results that were, anywhere near what you know other people were getting and I was perfectly comfortable with that um and you know I'm, I'm still comfortable with that you know as thrilled as I am with this picture you know I know that there are people out there getting far better results than this and you know it's not a it's not a competition it's about it's a hobby do you enjoy the hobby are you getting the results out of, results out of it that you want and that you're happy with um and that's something, like, something we each have to answer for ourselves now i said i'm not going to do a full tutorial of using the tool but i am going to do a quick walkthrough of some setup steps that will enable you to will enable you that will enable you to follow along with these other tutorials um especially the one by logomatico so that, um, you know, I spent some time Googling how to do some setup and things. I don't want to have to worry about that. So this is the video that I followed. And he does give the steps that you need to follow uh, in his description. But he doesn't really go through how to actually set them up and get them into the tutorial. So for instance, obviously you have to have Pixel Insight stuff installed. I'm not going to cover that. It's a standard software install. But you'll need to get the, I know the easy processing suite, um, which I had some difficulty with. Um, you'll need to install and configure uh, Starnet 2 or Starnet Exterminator. I used uh, Starnet 2 for my image. And you'll need um, the data until set that which you provided. Um, so he actually, for this tutorial, he gives in the image that he uses in this tutorial of the Pleiades, and that's the image you can see in this background here. And he also gives a tool pack, which you can open up into PixInsight, and it gives you most of these icons. Uh, these other two are ones that um, I just threw in while I was running the tool. So the first challenge I had with following along with his tutorial was actually on this second step of installing the easy processing suite. I followed the link and it was at a dead end. The page didn't load. I did some searching and I found that basically what happened is there was an update to Pixel Insight which broke the easy processing suite and the maintainer of it uh, he stopped maintaining it and stopped hosting it. Um, I didn't want to go through the effort of updating the software to work with the new version of PixInsight. And what the EC processing suite is, is it's literally a set of easy buttons for common PixInsight tasks. So I'll actually show you in PixInsight. Once it's installed, it'll show up in the script tab and it'll add its entry for EC processing suite. So it gives you the set of uh, six tools uh, for deconvolution, denoise, 
um, HDR, uh, live stack, soft stretch, and star reduction. Uh, so this is a fantastic set of tools to have for getting started with PixInsight. Um, so like I said, I did some Googling, found out that it wasn't there anymore. Um, maintainer uh, gave up on it. And finally I found uh, this page. Um, other user, Palmetto, took over the maintenance and distribution of Easy Processing Suite, uh, set up a new host for it. I was able to follow this link to the new host. It has these very nice to use uh, instructions for how to get it installed. I went through it step by step. Boom. Worked great. Um, so then I the rest of these initial setup steps uh, went pretty smoothly. Um, I downloaded uh, Starnet. Um, you will need to make sure that you download the uh, Pix Insight version, not the standalone. Obviously, you'll need to get it for um, Windows or Mac, uh, Linux, whichever, whatever your OS is. Um, and obviously, if this is your first time installing StarNet, you'll want to do the fresh install, uh, not the update. And of course, you want to make sure you get the download that matches your version of PixInsight. I believe that uh, I'm second, 189-2 um, is the version that actually broke Easy Processing Suite. Um, apparently, there was a lot of breaking changes in that version, so that's why there's one version for... 189-1 and lower, and one for 189-2 and higher. And then, of course, I had downloaded uh, his zip file, which contains um, the, I said, the raw image, as well as a file which you'll open um, into Pixel Site, and uh, it will give you these icons. Uh, it will give you these icons over here, and he will walk you through that part in his video. Um, one thing that did <laughs> throw me off at first was um, I opened his file and uh, I didn't see the icons. It looked just like you see here, no icons. Um, I had just needed to scroll to the left and they were they were there. So if you <laughs> if you open this open the file, you don't see the icons, try scrolling to uh, the right, not the left. Um, and see if they appear. So um, with those tools installed, I was able to follow his tutorial along fine until he got to the photometric color calibration. And I was, at that point, I was hard stuck. Uh, and I built to move forward until I found uh, this video by Visible Dark, which walks through uh, actually a new tool in uh, Pixel Insight called Spectro photometric color calibration, uh, which is a newer version of photometric color calibration. And he walks through that tool and here we go. Yeah, uh, one minute into the video, he gets to the download section and he walks you through everything you need to do to get the Photometric color calibration working to download these edit, edit files from PixInsight and um, add those to PixInsight. And then basically, what you do is before you can do the photometric color calibration, uh, you have to go to script, image analysis, and image solver. Um, bring this tool up, just leave everything alone, click OK. Ah, you get this error. Um, what you'll need to do is update the date and time to when you actually took the image. Um, so I had this image on January 28th. Um, I didn't actually bother with putting in the exact time. Uh, this was close enough. So you click OK. Um, the console will come up. It will do its thing. Uh, 
Take a few seconds, spell some output, and then it'll be done. So yeah, this is the result of the analysis, and basically what it's doing is it's verifying the exact chunk of sky that's contained in the image and its coordinates. Uh, and it'll add that data to uh, the image, and once that's done, then you can do the photometric color calibration. Uh, so in summary, um, I recommend, very much recommend this video tutorial, but in order to follow along, you'll need to first of all link in my description to this page. Uh, actually, I link directly to this forum post. Um, you want to download the tool uh, and follow these instructions to install it for to get the easy processing suite. Then you can use his link to download uh, Starnet 2, or if you want to go ahead and pay for, or if you already own a license for Star Exterminator, um, go that route. Get files he provides. Then you'll want to follow this tutorial, which I'll link to in the description. Then actually start watching his video and you should be able to follow along directly with all the steps.